Naomi, thanks for joining us. I'm Linda Kincaid. Welcome to CNN Newsroom. The fallout over U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital continues with protests and anger in the region. This was the scene in the West Bank city of Bethlehem a short time ago as Palestinian protesters clashed with Israeli forces. The clashes follow Israeli airstrikes on Hamas targets in Gaza. The Palestinian Health Ministry says two Palestinians were killed. According to the Palestinian Authority Jerusalem, that the Jerusalem decision amounts to withdrawing from the peace process. President Mahmoud Abbas will not meet with U.S. Vice President Pence when he visits the region later this month. Well, our Ian Lee is standing by and joins us now from Jerusalem. Ian, not only is the Palestinian leader saying uh, he won't meet with the vice president, the U.S. vice president, when he meets there, when he comes to the region later this month, but he's saying he's going to cut all ties with U.S. officials. How serious is this and what does it mean for the peace process? Very serious, Linda, if you consider you know, that the Americans have been such an, played in such an important role in this peace process in the past. Uh, you also have the Palestinian president saying that he views the United States as an actor now, not as an arbiter, which is very significant. This is also comes as President Trump said that this wouldn't affect the peace process. You know, he could say one thing, but the Palestinians are saying the other, and uh, it takes two different sides to come together to have a, some sort of peace deal, and it looks like the Palestinians are, are taking a pass, at least for now. So what does that mean? Who's gonna come in and fill the void that the United States plays? That's going to be very difficult, and that puts this whole peace process in jeopardy. And in the meantime, Ian, we're seeing these protests, uh, thousands of people protesting over the last few days, and again today. Yeah, you know, these protests really started strong on Thursday, and uh, as the days progressed, as these days of rage progressed, uh, the numbers got significantly smaller. We, on Thursday, were out at this place just outside of Ramallah. There were thousands of people there on Thursday. Today, we went to the exact same place, same time. Uh, there were dozens of people there. Uh, it doesn't look like, at least from this point, that these protest movements still have the momentum to keep going forward. Now, yesterday, we saw massive protests in Gaza uh, where two people were killed by the Israeli military. An additional other two people were killed during uh, airstrikes after rockets were fired from Gaza. The Israeli military responded, saying they hit uh, ammunition warehouses and manufacturing plants. Uh, so the tensions in Gaza are still very much there. But when you look across the West Bank and Jerusalem, and you speak to people and ask them, why aren't the numbers out there? There seems to be some defeat in their voice. Uh, and, and in their words, they feel that... Uh, they just haven't had the support from their leaders and especially from the rest of the Arab world. They feel that they've been abandoned uh, by other Arab leaders and, and, and other countries. So uh, there is a bit of defeatism uh, when you speak to them, uh, but there's still the protests that are going on. So that will be the true test, Linda, is if these protests continue, if the numbers get up or if they just slowly fade away. Uh, but uh, given you've got uh, other areas of the world, you've got the United Nations, you've got the European Union uh, coming out and saying we reject the U.S. decision. If most of the world doesn't recognize the U.S. decision, why does it carry so much weight? I think because the United States has played such an important and large role in this region, in the peace process, and it always tried to portray itself as this neutral party that could bring both sides together and it's had such a large presence uh, in the Palestinian territories in Israel uh, both parties looked at the United States to help solve this uh, peace deal and when you have the United States come out and make this declaration for the Palestinians uh, they say that this just shows the United States true colors that they were never a neutral party to begin with uh, and so they feel that uh, the United States somewhat has betrayed them. And so that's why you do see this reaction. But you're right. It's just the United States. We'll see if other countries follow suit. And it, just because the United States declares it doesn't mean the international community does as well, Linda. All right. Ian Lee for us uh, live from Jerusalem. Good to have you there. Thank you.
Well, the Iraqi Prime Minister says the dream of liberation from ISIS has finally become a reality. Haider al-Abadi says the military has driven all remaining ISIS militants from the country and now control the entire border between Iraq and Syria. Today our troops were able to purge the islands of Nineveh and Anbar in full. And they are now fully controlling the Iraqi-Syrian borders. These victories are not only for the Iraqis alone, though the Iraqis were themselves who achieved such victories with their sacrifices. But the victories are for all Arabs, Muslims and the world alike. This announcement comes three years after ISIS captured territory in Iraq and Syria and declared a caliphate. The U.S. State Department says the liberation of Iraq does not mean the war against terrorism in Iraq is over.